to the sort of a traditional algorithm, right, which is uh, for segmentation. One of the last ones that I wanted to talk about is this mean shift method. And unlike the k-means and the and the GMM, right, where we had certain sort of these constraints, the sense that GMM, right, we said that it could probably model, say, right, elliptical clusters. K-means, of course, you know, has this uh, constraint that it has to be circular and so on. Whereas, if you notice here, right, this is a very sort of an say elegant way of doing, and uh, of, and uh, a reasonably robust method. And you can see that right, it has been able to do the segmentation of this landscape. And uh, you know you are able to see that right. I mean all these things right that have been that have been segmented as one segment, and these colors, and then the water as one color, and so on. And uh, and right and and you know you don't see any particular shape kind of thing here, right? So this whole segment right has has actually come out as come out as one segment and so on. Therefore, this is actually a versatile technique, okay, for uh, you know for doing segmentation. And uh, and what it does is right. So in a way, I mean, I know I'll kind of I'll work through the math a little later, but just want you to understand, right? What is it? So mean shift, right? So which basically means that you know it is trying to shift the mean every time. It's a kind of right iterative process, and it's like a gradient ascent algorithm. And uh, we'll see, right? Why it is so? And the way it works is that right? It actually you know it seeks modes or the maxima, right? In a sense, or, or the local maxima of of a PDF in the feature space. So, so in a sense, right? What it is kind of looking at is, for example, here is a feature space. It is the LUV, which is which is a color space. So, if you had this image on the left, and if you try plotting the values of of the of the LUV, right, where those points occur, so you can see that you know there is there is clearly a cluster here. There is clearly probably a cluster here. There is a cluster there. There is a cluster there. When you're going to visually look at it, right, you can see that you know there are these there are these groups that are actually existing there. And and the way and the way this mean shift algorithm works is by actually modeling each one of these as actually a PDF, whose mode is what you seek, because uh, b because right, it's like saying that it's like saying that right I mean, no, no, you have a group and there is actually a, you know a concentration, so where there is a maximum sort of a concentration that's your maxima that's a, that's a PDF maxima and around that local concentration you have a group and similarly you go here there is a local concentration around which there is a group, similarly right so on and so forth right so you can so the way so the way right you can think about it is it's, it does uh, some kind of a search so for example right, you could start from any arbitrary point okay and uh, and uh, it's called the kind of a basin of attraction so what that means is right if you start from here and then here is a search window uh, and uh, and let's say that right, you started somewhere and then uh, there is a vector right that is actually pointing out which way you should go in order to achieve a higher this one uh, concentration Okay, that is the that is the idea of this local maxima. So to say that right, you are going to achieve a higher concentration. What this means is that you are initially in blue, and now it is indicating that right where you need to be heading to is this is this yellow dot, right? So as as time progresses with the next iteration, right, it's, so the blue has shifted to where the yellow was. Now the the yellow is shifted further, right, indicating that there is a concentration. The basin has a higher concentration in that region, and then it goes there, right? And then from there, if you see also notice. The step size keeps on shrinking, right? Because as you keep approaching the mode, the step size will shrink, and then, right? Eventually, eventually, it'll go and sit there, and then, and then, right? And then, it'll not move from there. So, the so the way to kind of think about it is, if you have a cluster, and if you pick up any point, right? And if you try to, if you try to see traverse, so this could be your mean shift path, right? Your means could be shifting from there to there to there to there, but then they will all come to the same mode. So, all those points that belong to one cluster, right, will all kind of come together and come to come seeking the basin sort of the maximum of the basin so for example right, here could be here could be another sort of a cluster right, which comes and seeks it through and uh, so in a way right so in a way what you can think about is is a kind of you know pdf right uh, you can think of uh, you know a terrain right so which uh, so where you can think of a pdf that is actually generating those samples right so so if, so if you think of a pdf here then you can think of that pdf as being responsible for those samples there and similarly you can think of a pdf here that is being responsible for those samples there and so on right and that that is the idea now how this mathematically pans out right is what we will see next okay so how this pans out is as follows so so the way it works is like this see for example right i mean if you had if you had a pdf like that right suppose let's say suppose i gave you gave you you know a distribution and uh, like I said, right? I mean, you, know, you could have this, and then you have one peak here, one peak there, and maybe another peak there, and so on. So, if you if you wanted to model model a PDF, and if you had actually a discrete 
values right where you know that for example when you when you take an image and then you plot right l u v values right i mean you have you have you have certain certain values that appear right and then you you will typically right what will you do when I mean, the, the simplest way to do it is if it is a continuous pdf let's talk about a continuous pdf right that's what we are interested in then it will be like uh, you know summation which had n m number of points right within that uh, within that sort of a group then you'll have like i equal to 1 to m and then you will typically typically delta of you know x minus x i where this is uh, this is a Dirac delta. Okay, what this means is that if you were to if you were to write I mean you know write integrate you see f of x of course you know it will integrate to 1 and at the same time uh, if you if you wanted to seek what is the value of value value right I mean you know the, uh, no, so what kind of area f of x has at a at a kind of particular location right? then you can think of it as the as the as, as the area under that kind of say delta. Now the you know the question is this is not good right this is not actually a good approximate this is not a good way to arrive this is still f hat of x okay not really this is still an approximation right. So, we are trying to arrive at an approximation what you really need to see for example right what what this is this is almost saying is that you know if I had a neighboring point right and suppose I did not have values for that it is so it is almost seems to think that right they would not occur at all okay. Now the you know the idea is that typically right a continuous sort of sort of a pdf will have will have a will have a notion of smoothness around it right. I mean if you are if you are seeing a point that is occurring very likely that whatever is next to it right will also occur with some finite probability very likely that right something else will also also occur according to a finite probability. Now that is what is actually what 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 a Parson window does right a Parson window technique what it does is it tries to model f of x by actually putting a putting a bump on top of right each of these values right that you have it puts a bump on top of them and this bump should be such that it should be a smooth bump. So that, so that I mean, right? Think of it as a kind of you know a convolution operation, right? I mean, you have you have values at some places, and you want values in between. And what you can think of doing is doing is right, putting a putting a bump out there and everywhere, right? And then when all these come together, and then if you want to know what is the value at some point, right, it will be just the just the sort of you know a superposition of all those bumps, right? That actually contribute to that point. So think of the Parson window like that. And uh, in that sense, right? So what we do is you know instead of modeling modeling f of x, which is actually a, a continuous sort of a distribution, so density function in this case so i is equal to 1 to m and then we have a kernel k and then x minus x i and then we have a semicolon h now this is called this is called a kernel and and right this kernel typically needs to so needs to satisfy some some simple things in the sense that right k of x should be always greater than or equal to 0 and then integral k x dx right should be equal to 1 and so on in order for this to remain remain a pdf some simple things it should satisfy but again right people have found that there is a certain choice of kernels some 4 or 5 right that are actually most ideal in order to you know use them here one of them of course is actually you know uh, this one a gaussian and there are a few others now to kind of think of this h is actually a parameter that controls the actually window size right I mean I don't know how much of a search area right. So for example when you are sitting at a location how much far how far should you be looking around you right and that is sort of a hyper parameter and uh, and right this is one way. So I mean right, you must have seen other expansions for say f of x right and this is one of so this is called this is called the Parson technique this is called the uh, the Parson window technique and uh, uh, and and in a way right you can also think about it like i said right you can think of it, think of it as a kind of right a convolution operation where where if you want if you had samples elsewhere and then you wanted to wanted to have the value of samples in between then you can sort of figure out right what would be a superposition of the contributions now uh, mean shift right uh, basically the mean shift algorithm is actually a non para a non sort of a parametric approach see if you looked at the look at the uh, the gmm it was actually a parametric approach right we said that it be modeled as a sum of gaussians and so on weighted gaussians right now this is completely non uh, non this parametric just because a kernel is actually parametric okay does not mean that f of x becomes parametric okay uh, so you could have for example k as uh, really a gaussian kernel and uh, that by itself does not make it really a parametric approach so f of x is, is a non parametric approach and uh, the i mean good thing about this is right it is kind of it is actually it can do a generic clustering unlike uh, uh, unlike your c g m m and all right i mean you know which uh, which kind of look for uh, right elliptical sort of you know uh, clusters and so on so generic in the sense that any shape is fine and it is kind of mode seeking it's a mode seeking algorithm right and uh, mode seeking and uh, mainly right looks at uh, looks at your looks at your feature space right as something made up of individual individual f of x where where a local mode right will tell you will, will tell you what is the kind of a cluster there so it's mode seeking and uh, you can actually show that it's a kind of a gradient ascent algorithm 
uh, I'll, I'll, okay, we will see that and then it is not really you know a generative model in that sense. Okay. This is not meant to be a generative and the, uh, the other thing is that right it, uh, it can actually get to the mode without, without uh, I mean right in a, in a sense that right I mean the idea is that you want to seek the mode right that is the, that's the most important thing. When I say that it is not really a generative model in the sense that we are not looking at generating samples okay. unlike a GMM where probably you could have a very nice model which you can probably extend later in order to even use it as a kind of you know a generative model whereas here right we do not really we are not looking at really doing a computation of uh, say FFX. The idea is to uh, idea is to go and uh, hit the modes of modes of modes of FFX and therefore right, that is why we do not call it a generative model we call it more in terms of a mode seeking mode seeking approach where we are happy I mean right if you can kind of you know arrive at the mode okay and uh, uh, go ahead f of x is a pdf x is x is actually a, a continuous are your samples are uh, for example in the, the feature space right for example x i x i could be a rgb color so you have like you know one color one color one color i mean what you what i have shown here is all those colors it could be in some space right it could be an rgb it could be an luv so in that space right you plot all these points and then one way to kind of look at look at the model this pdf is to simply say that f of x is simply a summation of all these impulses but that's not correct right because because x x being being a continuous quantity it's uh, right. It's not true that you know if it is occurring so somewhere here, then it won't occur elsewhere. So that's the reason. Answer is zero, which is not which is not correct, right? Because that is the reason why you go for this kind of a local smoothing, okay? And smoothing in the sense that right, the, the idea is that is that right, you want to be able to able to sort of uh, this is called a, a Parson technique. The idea is that you choose a kernel such that right when you actually think of it as a bump right which you can put on top of every peak that you have you have these x i values right think of a bump sitting on top of it and this bump will sort of die off think of another bump that is maybe sitting somewhere else that has its own bump and then all these bumps come together right and there is a superposition going on and if I want f of x anywhere in between I will just integrate I will just do a do a superposition right? it will just kind of add all the, all the contributions from coming from anywhere it is like a convolution because the bump actually does not change the bump is the same so it is actually a convolution it is not it is more than a superposition it is actually a convolution and wherever you want right you can just add up those contributions. So the, the way so the way to kind of show it right is this this so, so in general right so what we kind of do is that uh, right in order to kind of pick this k right so this kernel there are various choices for the kernel one 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 particular choice right of this kernel which which kind of we will look at is something like k of x uh, or k of u is equal to e raise to minus half u okay this is, this is one such one such uh, one such choice of a kernel you can also have a polynomial kernel and so on but uh, this is what uh, so for example right, if you think of k of norm of x minus x i I mean if you take the vector case by h square right that that uh, that in a sense will be like e to the power minus half norm x minus x i square by 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 h square right so this in a sense is is really a gaussian right mm, so red uh, i mean uh, so what to, so okay now this is u actually greater than or equal to 0 okay so what this means is that one choice of u right which you can have is is uh, really this right which would then you know yield a gaussian now now what you can do is you can actually write your uh, write your f hat of x or f of x right i'm writing f of x which really actually f hat okay this is still an approximation of x but this is not exact okay so f of x right you can think of is think of this as uh, let us say some constant okay sims uh, let us say k of norm of x minus x i square by by h square okay this is your kernel and this is some i is equal to i going from 1 to m. So, this constant right we will also absorb other things into this c okay or, or right now right you can even you can, you can even keep it as 1 by m if you wish and then and then right we can we can actually put in throw in other things okay. Now, when we say that right, it is actually mode seeking okay that uh, then it means that uh, means that right, if, I, if I were to compute compute a gradient of gradient a gradient of say f of x right with respect to x right. So, I would like to see what happens there okay right that is the that's the that's the that's the right uh, that's the part that will actually give us give us an idea into why this is called actually a mean shift right so what you can then do is you can write this as 1 by m summation i equal to 1 to m and then <coughs> you can write this as k dash norm x minus x i square by h square 
into let us say x minus x i this is a vector okay, all these are vectors this is also a vector right. Now yeah I mean if you take a specific case right you can solve this but but right you do not even need that. Then what you can do is you know, suppose we say suppose we indicate k dash of a uh, sorry g of x g of x is equal to just to just to simplify things k dash of, of x right suppose, suppose we just replace this by something that is more that is more easy to uh, that is just some some function right, g of x then 1 by m is summation so this becomes 1 by m then you have g of norm of x minus x i square by h square into x minus x i right and this you can now split okay, so, okay, so this you can write as 1 by m uh, where ah yeah yeah correct, correct yeah right I mean there is going to be 2 okay so so then we will just simply write make this into, into some c hmm? okay just just make it into some constant that will absorb everything and uh, then what you have is uh, Okay, so let us just split this as c into summation g of norm of x minus x i square this by h square okay, and uh, into x minus summation uh, x i g of norm of x minus x i square by h square right. So, this is all summed over i okay. and then what we can do is you know, we can actually divide and multiply by. So, we will say that is c into g of uh, norm of x minus x i square by h square right and then we will also have this term this, this guy right out here which is like summation x to g of norm of x minus x i square by h square. Okay, now, now this x right I can actually take it out right because this x is not dependent on i and I actually take that out whereas here I cannot take it out right this guy remains as x i g norm of x minus x i the square by h square and the whole thing I will divide by g of sorry this summation okay summation over i summation over i. Uh, g of norm of x minus x i square by h square. Okay. So, if you so yeah, so this summation is also over i. So, if you actually right think about it this right then think about this then what will happen is on the left right you still have gradient of f of x and on the right you have like c into summation over i g of norm of x minus x i square by h square. Okay, this is one term and then into now if you see here right this this and this will will actually knock each other off right and therefore you will get okay this is multiplied by x so the first term will become x and the second term will become minus summation x i g of norm of x minus x i square by h square by summation i g norm of x minus x i square by h square. Okay, right. That's what it will be. Now, this uh, for for most for, for uh, so the kind of the kernels that we choose, right? This is actually a positive quantity. Okay, this is k dash of x, and the way we choose the kernel is that this is a positive quantity. And what happens is, right? This term here, right? This is actually called the mean shift. Why do we call this the mean shift? Is because it's because right. I mean, if you kind of think about it, right? You are sort of looking. You are sitting at some location x right. So, the, so the way to kind of think about it is you are sitting at some location x and then and then you have a weighted mean of mean of mean of all the points within that window which is coming from the right and and this shift right and this mean shift is saying that if you were at x old right then you should be moving on to an x new which is like x old plus the mean shift right. That is what that is what in that is a graphical thing I was showing right how you move. So, the way you move is that you could you are at you are at x right now and what it is saying is that you have to you have to move from there and you have to move by an amount which is like the old x plus plus the mean shift amount okay that's why it's called the mean shift because you have a weighted mean on the right 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 is a weighted mean right this is a weighted mean quantity and it is saying that right you need to get a shift right in order to be able to 
in order in order to in order to achieve achieve a maximum for this guy uh, a gradient of say f of x and if you think about it right you can actually you can actually think about it as gradient I mean I can actually bring the quantity on the right onto the left and I can write this as gradient f of x by c into summation i okay g of uh, norm of x minus x i the square by by h square and then I have right x minus this right summation blah blah okay this is my actually mean shift quantity right. What do you see here? See when you write okay see one way to one way one way is that right I mean there is actually a convergence proof right which I am not showing here there is a there is a convergence proof right which shows that as you keep doing this iteratively right. So, for example, so the way this works is that you have like x new which will be like x old plus plus a mean shift okay. Now, and if you think about this mean shift quantity now do, do you see something here this is this is the mean shift what do you see here. I am writing x new as x old plus the mean shift right that is how that is how you move I am trying to show that this is an, this is an ascent algorithm this is actually a gradient ascent with something special going on I am hoping that somebody will tell that what is going on. Sir, what is x new on x? Eh? What? Oh uh, no it is like you started with started somewhere and you want to go somewhere right I mean you want to you want to go such that such that you reach the maximum of this f of x you are you are seeking the mode of f of x right. So, think of think of a group of points right that you have you have got right different groups of points right and when you have a group that basically means that you know there is a density of points there right which means that you are trying to seek the mode because around the mode is where all these things are grouped right that is the way you see it. So, so which means that all these points belong to that group. So, you are starting from somewhere right let us say let me let me take a take a point from this group and I take a window and I am moving right. So, so this window is this mean right this x i g this is over m number of samples right. So, that m number of samples is being computed over a window and I started from some x old and now it is saying that move such that x new becomes x old plus the mean shift the mean shift is the old x. So, x is like x old minus the minus is a weighted mean think of this x as x old in this quantity okay. Now, what, now what I am saying is so and then and then you move forward okay now what will happen is initially your step size okay that is what I did not want to use that word but let me use it now huh? but something more than that yeah you are right think of that as a step size but something more is happening it is actually it is an adaptive step size it is an adaptive step size it automatically decreases this the, the quantity on the right right will keep on falling and there is actually a, you know a convergence proof that shows that the right the mean shift will actually you know go to 0 eventually right as you keep on iterating the mean shift will, will eventually become 0 that actually means that the point at where you wanted to come to the mode you have reached there and you just stay there after that you do not get 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 any any forward movement. So, the way to think about it is if you think about this mean shift here right that is like you can think of this 1 by c this whole thing as your alpha the step size for the gradient right replaces here now with x old plus some alpha times a gradient of you see f of x that is how you would do right. Okay. So, the, so you move by actually the mean shift amount, but then moving by the mean shift amount is not something something right you are just doing like that it is actually a gradient ascent okay. it is actually a gradient ascent which takes you from anywhere that you are any point that you take from that cluster if you move it will actually right, uh, take you take you take you to the local mode there. And this f hat of x that you are modeling is that local cluster right you are not trying to model that is why I said that this is not a generative model this is like locally modeling each cluster you will have a mode for one cluster you have you have another f for another cluster another f for another cluster it is not like you are modeling an entire set of data samples right like you did in GMM. GMM it was like you know you had a complete sort of a distribution right f of x like you know summation of all the girls in that is not the way it is done here this is like local mode seeking you think of this as one bump think of that as another bump think of another and then right each one you have to seek a mode. And you, I mean the way to think about it is you have a distribution sitting there from where those those samples are coming right one distribution there from where these samples are coming another sort of a distribution there from there from where those samples are coming another sort of a distribution here from where those samples are coming and you are trying to seek the mode of each one of these because once you have the mode okay then then you know that all these points belong to the and the, and the I mean nice thing is wherever you start right if these points belong to the cluster they will all come there it is like a basin of attraction they will all come head to that mode. And then from another cluster they will all come and head to that mode that was that I mean so 
uh, well some people show simulations and all I do not have an actual simulation, but that slide right kind of sort of showed you right what, what it means. M is, the, M is the number of samples within a window, number of samples within the window of choice. Now that is the only hyperparameter here, how much you should see around you, how many samples should you have because I mean you cannot take a window that is too big right then it would not make sense because then, then you will encompass multiple, multiple, multiple clusters. So that is still a hyperparameter. Okay, so that you have to choose carefully, but as long as you do that, right, everything else sort of moves very nicely, and and there is no sort of a restriction that your cluster should be this shape, dust shape. It can be anything. Okay, so what I would so this alpha is actually an adaptive step size. This is an adaptive step size, and uh, there is a theoretical convergence proof. Theoretical convergence proof that MS that the mean shift will go to 0 it's also hyper yeah no no h is a hyperparameter. so the window function is a function window is a function of h so h sort of tells you so h is like you know telling the influence right I mean, how much will you so this norm x minus x y square if you do not have h right then it will sort of it will treat every x x i in a certain way if you now increase h right then then uh, if increasing h will mean what then it will mean that if something is uh, if something is what does it mean so if something is close right then it will have to be really close otherwise if h is small right then then it will become e power minus right yes, no the no it is just the ulta right it is, it is the opposite yeah so whatever so so that way you can control right I mean what you what I mean how you want to treat an x i that is near to x how much weight you want to give that will that will be that will be dictated by h right so so so, if you, so it means that if you have your h large right then it will mean that even something farther off will be not equally but then yeah I mean that will also be taken into consideration whereas or else you know it will just knock it off very fast right it will be like a very local window versus a spread out window. So a window is directly a function of h and, and and depending upon the choice of the kernel you know how you the window size will take shape. So theoretical convergence proof that m will go to go to 0 as the as you write iterations progress <coughs> iterations progress and uh, this is a gradient ascent. This is, a, this is a variant of actually a gradient ascent algorithm. I call it a variant because the step size is adaptive. Variant of gradient, not not gradient descent, gradient ascent. Okay. Yeah. So right. I mean, so I showed you some examples. So right, just to just to right quickly quickly go back and show those examples. So here is how it is. Right. So you model. So, so you have an image like this, then you plot the plot the feature space, and you can think of think of all those modes, right, which you're actually seeking locally in order to be able to you know get your cluster, and uh, and right, this is how it'll come. So you take a point, right, and then if you follow the mean path, right, the mean shift path, it'll it'll eventually end up in the mode here, anywhere you come from. The only thing is, right, you'll have to do it for every point. I mean that is what makes it computationally. But there are kind of ways to ways to not do it in a brute force manner. But so yeah, really, if you think about it, every point you're sort of trying to see where it goes. And uh, then, right after that, right, if you do, if you take this image, right, I mean, you can see that any shape is okay. You can you can cluster very well. These mountains, right? I mean, you can see that you know these shapes. You are not modeling them as elliptical or anything, right? Any shape is okay. So that is the strength of mean shift, which is why which is why I thought, right? I show, you know, which is why I didn't want to miss it, right? Uh, no, miss sort of explaining what it is, and and especially right the kind of gradient ascent part, right? It's nice right, to to kind of know how it works. All right, so I think with that, right, we are actually done with uh, done with all the kind of classical, not all, right, the most, uh, oops, the most uh, most relevant ones. I don't know what I did. The most relevant ones, and uh, hey, uh, a deep networks, right, for both optical flow, okay, which we've already done, as well as the uh, segmentation problem. Right, so I'm just I'm just going to kind of uh, right orally tell okay what those points are okay to the to the extent possible okay unless something something really needs to be written okay.